<laughs> Randy, welcome to the program. Thanks, Steve. How did you get into theater? I came to, I came to it kind of through the through dance. Okay. Because I actually started uh, taking dance classes before. Sure. Um, I did do a, I did a I was in Cub Scouts as a kid, and I was about nine, and I was in this play, and it was a really short play. Uh, you know, it's more like a skit, I guess, 15-minute okay. mm -hmm. thing, and all the cub, all the guys in my troupe, we did this thing, and I don't remember much about it. All I really remember was there was a, a cutout of a locomotive, and we were behind it. Right. And our heads, you know, stuck up above it. Right. And I had to say the word antihistamine. That's in the play. And that's a play. hard. <laughs> that was a hard word to say when you're eight years old. Or and how did it nine. come out? It came out antihistamine. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was the first thing I ever did on stage, and of course, then I heard the applause, and I was like, oh, "This is great!" And well, uh, well, you got into so you got into dance first. So where did the dance come from? Well. <laughs> Um, my mother was a, a frustrated performer. She never really got to. She was a singer, but she uh, she used to sing in. Uh, in that wonderful train uh, coming by, yeah. Love that train. <laughs> and a histamine. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We got it in. Okay. Uh, uh. Now my mother was a singer, and she she wanted a star. She was bound to determine she was going to have a star in, in the family. Right. So she made all of my sisters who were older than I to right. take dance classes. And the fact that I was a boy right. didn't stop her. No. Nah. So uh, when she, when the other ones kind of fizzled out, right. she says, I have one more shot. Right. So I, I started taking, uh, she put me in uh, tap and jazz classes right. when I was nine. And at first I, you know, I really, I wasn't too wild about it at first. But, um, it kind of grew on me, you know, and, yeah. I, and I really came to really love it after a while. So, um, so that kind of led into um, my first musical, mm -hmm. and I guess this is why I love musicals so much, is because of the dancing and the singing. Sure. And, um, and I like straight plays as well, but I, I really love musicals. And uh, so my first musical was, uh, I was a freshman at uh, Crosby High School. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, a, a high school in uh, Pasadena, Texas, was doing Oklahoma, okay. and they were looking for someone to dance the part of Will Parker. Mm -hmm. It's this big tap number, as you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they couldn't find anybody to do it. So uh, they were searching. You know, finding a male who can tap at the age right. of fourteen is like right. <laughs> you know. That's not something you admit to, right? No, when you're watching, yeah, right. It, it, yeah, it, it, yeah, right. It was, uh, yeah, and so uh, they were they scoured all the dance schools in Pasadena, and of course they finally did find me. Sure. Uh, so the guy came down to uh, hold the audition, and and he said, "Okay, you know, go ahead and show me some stuff." And I, I did like two steps. He says, "You got the job. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually like, move." Okay, it's okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> And you know how to put the shoes on. <laughs> you can tie your shoes. Okay, you're, you're good. Yeah. So, um, so that was my that was my first really big musical. So, uh -huh. And I came in late, and I came in uh, like about a week before opening. A week. A week. And so it was like you know every day after school sure. I have to because I lived in Crosby, so to, the drive to Pasadena was about forty five minutes, right. and my sister run me over there. We do the rehearsal and mm -hmm. then we'd run over to the high school and go up on the stage and and uh, that so yeah it was um, it was a blast I mean I loved it and so I that kind of uh, cemented how much I really loved musicals and I guess they liked you too so other musicals they did in high school they did love me um, I was a hit in my high school because you know I was in the paper and <laughs> oh, oh, I, I mean oh. I made my picture was in the paper and, and you know I was a Crosby at that time, we're talking 1969, was right. uh, if you sneezed, you missed it kind of town. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was a big hit. And my, my history teacher actually came and saw me in the show. Mm -hmm. He was, of course, he told everybody. And then, um, of course, then all the, the jocks at school were, you know, they wanted to pound me. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> well, you're taking up space in the newspaper? <laughs> Uh, I was upstaging. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Well, you think about high school. You know, in high school, you know, basically you were on a jock, you know, or one of the in crowd. You no. Know, you sport. weren't even noticed. You were never in the yearbook. You were never in the paper. No. You, were never, you know, you were nobody. 
Uh, yeah, I wasn't in sports, you right. know, because, you know, typically people who like the theater are not. Generally. Right? Generally speaking, I mean, um, so yeah. It, mm. So that's, that's, how I, that's how I got into it. So you did this for a while. What did you do in college then? In college, um, well, of course, I did plays in high school, as well, in our high school right. as well, but we never did a musical in my high school, ever. And, well, I'll explain. Um, <laughs> I'll explain. It, um, it, this, the school I went to was very, I guess, poor, didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. um, and the class, the high school was actually used to be the junior high at one time, which, was, which then became the high school. Yes. But the auditorium was actually in a building across the street, which used to be the, uh, was which built in 1924. Wow. And they were still using it and right. had been condemned several mm -hmm. times. And well, the auditorium was upstairs and the, uh, they were, the school was so poor that, you know, our lighting was like just like, 660 watt light bulbs <laughs> and the uh the curtains were actually hand sewn by the home ex students well hey. and so i mean yeah. you know we had to make do so right. um so they never ever did musicals i mean yeah. it just wasn't even a, a consideration mm -hmm. uh, they we did a lot of one act and we went to uil competitions sure. mm -hmm. and i was involved with that mm -hmm. but but that was about the extent of it when i went to sam rayburn high school to do oklahoma I was like, I was, I was shocked, <laughs> to, to put it lightly. I mean, they had real curtains and a real auditorium and, you know, with real seats and, and real curtains and lights and, you know, the light board just blew me away. I right. mean, wow, it's not just off and on. Oh. You know, that, that's all yeah, we had. Right. It was either off or on. So, uh, yeah. Uh, in college, um, I really didn't do any, any theater in college. Why not? You do, it's not that you gave it up, or just I, I just wasn't doing it then. I, I you oh. know, that's that's a good question. I don't know why I wasn't. It didn't relate to your major, though, right? I mean, but no, not that that means anything either. But yeah, I just wasn't. I wasn't doing it then. Right. Um, uh, you know, it, it did is, you lose interest, or I think I was just taking a break. <laughs> well, that can be too. Yeah, I, you know, I think I was just. Um, yeah, I, I just wasn't really doing it in college. So, what did you major in in college? Well, my, my major was, uh, originally was radio and television. Right. Uh, which then got changed to journalism, which okay. is kind of still related. Uh huh. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, that's, that was my major. You majored in journalism? I did. But you don't work in that field now? No. And I, I didn't finish the degree. So what do you do now? For now, real life, in real life. In real life, yes. I, I work for, uh, Xerox. Mm -hmm. uh, I work in the uh, actually work on a contract for the state of Texas right mm -hmm. now in their data center. Um, mm -hmm. A computer operator uh, monitor their mainframe processing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because mainframe. I mean, they still have a place in, in yes. today's world. Yes. If you were to explain to someone why would you use a mainframe over uh, a PC or, or even a cluster of PCs? Right. I mean, there are things they do better than uh, yes. PCs. Yes. Um, well. Uh, they have this thing called batch processing. Yes. And, uh, real which, people do batch which, processing, right? <laughs> real real yes. work gets done by batch processing. Right. Yeah. And so, therefore, mainframe right. computing. So, right. Uh, and for people who know what batch processing, that just means it's able to process a lot of work at the same time. Exactly. Well, we, we joke about the two, you know, real work gets done through batch processing. You know, right. you want to play around, you use a GUI. <laughs> right. There you go. There you go. That's true. So, what got you back into the theater and dance? Um, when I, let's see, in 1989, I uh, went, started going to, uh, I had been teaching uh, dance like around 1988. Yeah. I started teaching again mm -hmm. after a long break. Mm -hmm. I think my first, I actually, my first dance school, mm -hmm. was, I was about 18 and I had a wow. few, I had a few students in Crosby that used to come and take right. classes with me. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I started teaching uh, at, a, at a studio in Katy, Texas in 88. Mm -hmm. And then in 89, I, so I was just kind of, I was getting back into dance kind of um, full time, mm -hmm. so to speak. And I um, did, so I did that. And then um, uh, College of the Mainland in Texas City was mm -hmm. doing 42nd Street, mm -hmm. uh, one of my absolute favorite shows. Yes. And, um, because I'm a tap dancer, of course. Well, of course. And, yes. uh, and so I went down and auditioned for that show and I, I got into it. And so that kind of, 
lit the fire again. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a, had a blast on that show. Mm -hmm. um, it was just, you know, it's just one tap number after another. Yes, with pretty a few, much. With a few lines of dialogue. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, typical musical, right? But uh, that's a great music. Yeah, it's a, it's a great show. Um, yeah. Hope we do it in Conroe someday. Yes, we do. That would be but, great. Um, did a good Peggy Sawyer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that kind of got me started. Um, kind of relit the fire again you know, so, in a big way. And uh, um, so, yeah, it was that. And then in 94... Um, I actually started a community theater in Katy. Okay. And uh, uh, I and some partners of mine, mm -hmm. um, and I had done, uh, my church was doing Oklahoma again. Oklahoma right. is, a, it will pop up many times Lines in my in life. <laughs> yes. Because yes. it was my first musical and of one course. of the ones I really love. Right. Um, and so uh, my church was doing it, and I was a choreographer for that uh -huh. show. And um, so, there were a lot of things happening in that time period. And then after Oklahoma finished the second time, mm -hmm. um, I actually started a, a community theater called Katie Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. um, and our first show was Annie. Okay. And we had it at uh, Katie Junior High School Auditorium, and it was a big, big hit. Mm -hmm. um, I think we auditioned six dogs for that show. <laughs> six dogs? <laughs> yeah, I remember it vividly because... They were all different dogs, right. and different. You right. know, and of course, there's a certain look you're looking for exactly. in a dog. Yes. So you know, somebody comes in with a greyhound. Not gonna work. Uh, <laughs> next. <laughs> so were these people in the cast, or just people they wanted their dog in the show? They, some of them were uh, in the cast. Right. And you know, we put out the call. You know, we're looking for dogs. Sure. And of course, we got every dog. Yes. Everybody who had a dog. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, oh, my dog can do all this stuff. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So, um, and that was a fairly successful venture. Um, uh, there, it, it's a lot of work, as you know, it's oh, a yes. lot of work starting a theater company. Yeah. And Katie was a lot smaller, too. It was a lot then, smaller right? than, and, yeah. uh, but there was a real need for it out there. There's still a need for there it. There is. Uh, I, I can't, you know, every time we've had people work here in Conroe at our community theater because they said that Katie didn't have anything. And I don't know if that's true or not, but. You know, I, I, I look every now and then, kind of see—is there something going on in Katy? You know, or I don't think they have. Uh, you know, unfortunately, that one didn't. Yeah. You know, the longevity was right. not there. But because uh, I, I moved away, and and but you know, uh, I don't think they have anything right now. Which is sad because Katy's huge now. It's, it's huge, yeah. Um, but they were everybody was so happy when when it came to be because right. this, now we don't have to drive all the way exactly. downtown exactly know? so yeah it was a big it was a big thing and uh and it was it was a great experience um mm -hmm. you know i was uh my friends and i who started it uh, i was on the board of course know, and, you started yeah. it you hopefully you're on the board yeah <laughs> and uh um that part is not as much fun as, as no the theater part but no but it's necessary yeah well let's talk about that you you, you started that theater i mean what was the drive, other than the, the community had the need? Did you just personally want to do it? You saw the need? It was always was a dream of mine to start a theater company. Right. Just something I always wanted to do. Um, I always wanted to direct. Right. And I felt like, well, this, this would be you know, right. an easy way to start doing that. Um, right. Okay. <laughs> so about the time uh, you know, I started the theater, right. and I was still, um, I actually had an opportunity to purchased the dance studio that mm -hmm. I had been working at, mm -hmm. so I actually uh, did that. So I owned the dance school right. for several years, um, and I was also taking uh, master classes. You know, I, I was, I really, I had some great, great teachers in my dance career. I mean, really great. Um, Patrick Swayze was somebody who really, um, that I met back in the 70s and really, really in a lot of ways, I'm kind of where I am because of his mm -hmm. association so mm -hmm. um but um uh, i got to study with some great teachers i got to study with uh, one of the nicholas brothers oh my goodness yeah <laughs> uh, fayard nicholas uh in 2005 and i went and took a master class with fayard and that was just i can't tell you just being in the same room with that mm -hmm. man was just amazing and you know and it's a really where i am today is is really has a lot to do with the teachers i've had right. know, over the years so you had a dance studio because I know people. It's kind of the same thing. I want to start a theater. I want to start a dance studio. I yeah. I wanted to do. That. I always wanted to have a 
a business and right. that that one made sense because that's yes. what I knew how to do. Right. Uh, and it was I was just in the right place at the right time because she was her husband was being transferred. They had to move. Mm -hmm. She had to sell it. I was there and sure. worked out for both of us. Right. Well, you know, is running a dance studio a business, a theater, kind of similar in the sense that there's a lot of things you probably really didn't want to do, but it's, it comes with the business. It does. Um, the dance part, you know, the teaching, the dancing, yeah. that's that's the fun part. Right. Um, but, yeah, there is a, there is the business <laughs> side, and uh, you work long hours. You know, it's um, you only teach for, like, two or three hours a day. Right. But then you have to do the books and mm -hmm. uh, you got to recruit you know, more kids you right, recital, all the time. You have recitals every year. I mean, right. those are big productions. Absolutely. You know, yes. you know there's a lot to it. Yeah. So what made you give that up? Oh, uh, well, I... I don't know. It was just we we were moving out of the area. I was moving to um, Clear Lake, mm -hmm. uh, and um, there were a lot of changes going on in my life then, and didn't really want to give it up. But I felt like it was time to to do mm -hmm. something else. You weren't getting burned out necessarily. I mean, no, the move was understandable. You, you know, no, I wasn't. Yeah. Burnt, I was not burned out. I I right. could have gone, you know, probably forever with mm -hmm. it had I stayed. But mm -hmm. um, my kids were. You know, growing up and moving out, and mm -hmm. of course they're they were dancers too, of course. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be a dancer. Yeah, that is, <laughs> you will dance. You will dance. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's about different communities? You've different different communities within Houston. Houston has a lot of theater, a lot a lot of dance, but it is does vary by community. Right. And Katie, of course, has grown over the time. Well, it's about the, even the Clear Lake area. I don't know that they really had that much theater either. No. Or dance, um, I don't you know. I, not a lot. I mean, Texas City had, you know, College of the Mainland, which was a very yes. uh, highly regarded yes. community theater. Yes. Um, I think Jack Weston, who used to be the alley, was, mm -hmm. worked at the alley, wow. uh, actually became the artistic direct, director mm -hmm. out there. So um, he, uh, yeah, it, it was very top-notch theater. Mm -hmm. They still do uh, incredible they do. stuff. They it's do. just awfully far from somewhere. It's you know? a long way. <laughs> and I was living in Katy when I did 42nd Street, so that was um, over an hour drive yeah. for me. Uh, fortunately, my parents lived at Clear Lake, so I kind of moved in for three months. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who's coming to dinner? <laughs> and staying. And my mother was thrilled because oh, course, yes. uh, you know her, she had her boy back home mm -hmm. again. And, uh and it, and it was it was really nice because my dad was up in age and was um, was ill at the time, and I got to spend some some time, time. with him. So it, it worked out. It was good. So what brings you to the Conroe area? You were <laughs> I've done all over. It's like why? Not you're not really a cover, but you know, it's yeah, about a lake. You know, I've yeah. lived probably in every in every side of Houston. <laughs> got a try each side. <laughs> Crosby, Katy, Clear Lake. Um, well, I met the, my lovely um, better half, mm -hmm. and uh, we um, we came out here one time. We were supposed to go to Galveston, I think, as the story goes. We were supposed to go to Galveston for a weekend because we both right. love the water. Sure. And we couldn't go because we couldn't get a hotel room or something like that. And mm -hmm. um, so she said to me, well, have you ever been out to Lake Conroe? And I said, you know, I've never been to Conroe. <laughs> Like, why? Then, you know, <laughs> and so next thing I know, we booked a room out at uh, Del Lago. Yes. And went out there for the weekend, fell in love with the lake, just loved it. And two months later, we were closing on a house oh on the goodness, lake yeah. in April Sound. So we, I mean, that's just how it happened. I loved it out here. And you've got a wonderful view of that place. It's oh, just yeah. incredible. And yeah, I'm sure yeah. you see lots of changes over time as well. We have. Know, homes start to, you know, come along the way. We and, have seen a lot, yeah. So what was your first show you ever did with Crichton? First show here was Godspell in 2005. Godspell? Yeah. Um, yeah. Marty Craig directed. Um, I was choreographer. Uh, Penny was choreographer. Uh -huh. And um, that was the first one. First one we did. Wow. Um, it was a... Uh, I'll say I that's not that long ago. I have really. to say that's not one of my favorite shows. <laughs> well, it's not one. Of, I mean, just in general, you know, Godspell yeah. isn't one of my. Favorite. If I were to pick a show, yeah, Oklahoma, Godspell. Okay, I think Oklahoma would win, <laughs> and I know why it wins with you. Yeah, you know, I happen to be from Oklahoma, so yeah, okay, I'll, it's right. Notionally, I'll. And it was from, actually one of the first musicals I ever heard, you know, on records. Right. And so, I mean, it was a great experience. Um, 
because it was our first show here at the yeah. Crichton, and right. we really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, I had done it one other time before that for a youth group at mm -hmm. a church in Katy, mm -hmm. and um, it was a lot different here than it right. was there. But it was, you know, but yeah, that was the first one. Well, let's talk about you know. I know you worked a lot with uh, kids groups, well, in, in theater and in dance. Uh, we certainly need that now. Um, what is the secret to how do we captivate uh, the, the kids to, so they continue this tradition of theater and dance and the arts in general? All right. I think you have to make it um, really. What well, you have to, it has to be fun for kids. Yeah, well, yeah. Any, anything that children do, you know, you have to make it really fun for them. Um, but I think it it um, it teaches them also that you know, uh, coming together mm -hmm. for a common goal yes. as a team, you mm -hmm. know, working together. I think those are all, um, you know, really things that, that kids need mm -hmm. today. And, um, so, I mean, I've spent, you know, a lot, my whole life really working with mm -hmm. young people. And I, I like working with young people. I believe in young people. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you always hear people say, Oh, kids, you know, they, <laughs> No, it's <laughs> kids are great, you know, but it, it, I think it's a gift that I mean, it's not, you know, some people can do it, some people can't, you right? Know? Just so I, I think it's important for kids to to do theater I'm, and dance. If for no other reason, it's a great exercise. Absolutely, you know, yeah. whether or not you perform it or not, mm -hmm. uh, you know, tap tap or well, any kind of dance is a great aerobic. Yes, exercise. and we really need that now too. We all do. We everybody <laughs> you know, needs. We that. all need it. It's just too easy to be sedentary. But yeah, because they say we sit too much, and we we do. You know, we. I'm guilty. Yeah, guilty. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I sit a lot too. Yeah. So, my job requires it. <laughs> oh, our job. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> so when you have time off, and I'm sure that's not a lot, what do you like to watch? Uh, like on TV. TV, movies, whatever. I'm Netflix. a Breaking Bad fan. You're a Breaking Bad fan. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh. I'm just chomping at the bit for that to come back on TV. Um, yeah, I really like Breaking Bad. Um, I've been watching uh, Downton Abbey. Oh, my goodness. Yes, big Downton Abbey big, fan. I'm a big fan of that show. Oh, my I've goodness. been watching, let's see, what else? Um, I like Parenthood. Really? I, yes. I, it's funny. I, I didn't watch it. It's been on three or four years now. Right. And I haven't been watching it, but I have Netflix, and I sort yeah. of blew through the first three seasons right. in like You're two like, days. You know, I like that sometimes. You know, yeah. that, that you, you, you hear about it from other people, maybe you don't have time to see it initially, and then you just catch up on yeah. a block. Yeah, I like yeah. that because there's no commercials. Exactly. Um, so I can really get through a lot of episodes. But I really like that show. I hope it. I hope they renew it. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. going to be renewed or not, but. Yeah, I really like that show. I know you're on the road a lot. What do you listen to on the road? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, mainly Christian radio. Really? Yes. Um, I listen to uh, KSBJ until it starts getting all garbled. Right. Right around uh, mm -hmm. uh, Brenham, I start losing the signal. Yeah. But then there's another one, uh, K Love. I think is in Austin. I don't know if it's in Austin, but right. I start picking that one up. You know, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. So yeah. Uh, but most of the time, I uh, a lot of times I don't listen to to the radio uh, that much. I just have all these musical theater songs right. <laughs> that play in my head. <laughs> hey, I'll sing some for you. No, I just <laughs> you have to sing off the road. Okay, I got, I got two hours to go. Here. But when I'm not doing that, I I listen to Christian radio. Yeah, what's about uh, Christian? Because for a lot of folks, faith is a component, big component of their lives, and right. it does carry over to things they do, like right. dance. Right, like arts, and and sometimes there is this creative tension between faith and arts. How do, right. how, how does that work for you? Um, let's see. You know, I I do a lot of work with CYT. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people have said, "How does that really work?" Because you know, how do you meld Christian mm -hmm. um, philosophies, values, values yes. with the theater, which is so. Uh, Clickish, I say, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Well, it is. I mean, yeah. it, it can be. Um, not always, but mm. and uh, it is. It is kind of a an interesting uh, tight wire, you know, tightrope kind of thing. Yeah. You have to, you know. But I think I think it. Uh, like I said before, I think it it works really well because uh, CYT, for example, you know, it teaches them so many things, you know, about. Mm -hmm. 
you know, coming together, working together, um, mm -hmm. loving each other, yes, being supportive of each other. Yeah. I think those do it in the practice, not not the theory. Right, right, right. and um, so it works. I think it does work. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's true like anything else. Uh, things of themselves are not good or bad necessarily. It's right. how we use them. That's right. That makes them uh, good or bad. That's right. So. What haven't you done that you'd like to do, theater or dance? I would really like to do, as far as shows, I'd really like to do Singing in the Rain. Mm -hmm. I would like to do, um, uh, uh, what's that other show? Um, I'd like to do Cabaret. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if it'll ever be done in Conroe, but I think it'd be an interesting show to do. It'd be a nice night show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> after after 10 o'clock, <laughs> after 11 o'clock, whatever. Um, you know, there's a wonderful show called Stepping Out. I don't know if mm -hmm. you're familiar with mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, It was... It was written in 1984 by Richard Harris, who's a uh, British playwright. Mm -hmm. It's a small cast. There's like 10 people. Mm -hmm. One guy, nine women. Mm -hmm. And it was made into a movie in the 90s with Liza Minnelli and mm -hmm. uh, I think Shelley Winters was in mm -hmm. that movie. It's a wonderful show. It's not uh, a musical per se, but it does have a big tap dance that she plays. Right. Uh, the person, Liza Minnelli's character plays this kind of former Broadway dancer who's trying to, mm -hmm. has this ragtag right. group of people she's teaching to tap to. And it, it's an interesting show. I, I'd like to do that show. I don't know the availability of it, but. I can't imagine that. Let's see, tap. I wonder why you like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got tap in it, I'm in. You hear it there. <laughs> I'm in. Well, well, no, but there's nothing wrong with tap. Now, tap, I mean, you see, it's amazing, the response to tap, especially even now. It, it's, it's um the one thing I hear from the Conroe audiences all the time, and you know, with White Christmas, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, after performing in that show, and they'd come out of the theater, and they'd, we need more of this in Conroe. We need more tap shows. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm trying. I guess do the Follies do they do that kind of stuff too? I, I mean, I know they do dance routines, but do they do tap too? They do. They do. They do. Yeah. They do. Talking about yeah. the Walden Follies. Yeah, Walden Follies. Yeah, they do. Um, I have a friend who's in that group, and and they do. Yeah, they are primarily a tap mm -hmm. uh, troupe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever been down to, was it uh, Puffa Bellies? They do, you know, they do a lot of the melodramas. Well, really? before the melodrama, there's usually some type, I'll call it talent show, not really, but an act. And sometimes they do clogging, tapping, what, what, oh. uh, yeah, bef before, because they need something, it's kind of like the opening act, if you will. Okay. Uh, or just entertainment. And then right. they do, and they do their melodrama, which is silly, lasts about 90 minutes, and you're out by 9.30. It, it's pretty, and you get to eat food, drink if you like. You know. uh, it, it, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, 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 it's a greasy spoon. Yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, <laughs> people have fun throwing popcorn and rolls at the bad guys and, oh, okay. and hooting and hollering. It, it's, you know. Interesting. Okay. It's well, not high brow, but who cares? You know, it's fun. No, it's just fun. It's yeah. just fun. Yeah, yeah exactly. That would be fun. So, awesome. All right. Well, last question we've been asking everyone. If heaven exists, what do you want God to say when you get to the pearly gates? He'll probably say, put your tap shoes back on. <laughs> I want to see your routine. Okay, you're auditioning. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, I hope he says, uh, I would like him to say, uh, thanks for loving people. That's nice. I think that's what I'd like to hear. That's excellent. Randy, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Steve. <laughs>